Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, as introduced, I'm Professor Mokhtar from KFUPM, and uh, I would like to share with you our recent findings on uh, proving the concept of a test apparatus that can be convertible to different strengthening systems and different test standards, uh, be it externally bonded, near surface mounted, um, both FRP, FRPM, uh, shape memory alloys, etc. Um, I have a brief outline here showing the introduction where I will go over the overview of the problem and then the goal of the study that will include the solution of the challenges faced and uh, the experimental uh, campaign followed by its results, conclusions and future work. Now, we know the FRP concrete uh, integrity, I mean, depends on the integrity of the bond itself. Therefore, getting the exact estimate of the bond behavior is very important. Uh, for example, for a flexibly loaded FRP strengthening member, we can identify three different possible scenarios where we have a case here that is within the uncracked region of an FRP uh, concrete bond. And in that case, we assume pure mode 2 debonding may take place, whereas in regions close to the midspan of the flexibly loaded members, we might expect uh, a combination of shear and com uh, compression. So it's more, uh, more or less like a, a, a mixed mode testing but, uh, or behavior, but uh, because of the compression effect, it tends to aid in the bond instead of weakening the bond. And then we have the locations that are characterized by shear peeling, where there is a weakening due to the positive angle that may be there, contrary to the one in the mid-span. Now, by design, most of the existing test methods that are uh, there in the literature to capture different scenarios of FRP concrete bonds are meant to capture one or more of these, but not all at a time. And, uh, of course, given that no single test can conduct all the uh, 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 characterization approaches, then each test can be considered limited to one of those certain scenarios. So, uh, for example, broadly speaking, we can characterize the STM uh, beam-based testing as one of the group of test methods, which is more or less closer to mimicking the shear compression behavior that I've already uh, pre presented in the previous slide. And then we have the pure mode 2 test, such as the single and the double lap shear tests that are based on the Canadian standards or Japanese uh, standards. Uh, these are mainly applicable when you now deal with the regions that are not uh, cracked, such as the uh, one of the three cases I presented in the previous slide. Sometimes we have the modified version of the double lap shear test, where one of the concrete blocks is substituted with a U-shaped FRP, and uh, we will discuss about the shortcoming of this modified version, because one may not be capable of uh, bending some types of uh, externally bonded systems, such as the protruded systems and so on. Uh, then we have the mixed mode tests that can capture the scenario where we have the shear peeling. And uh, they are more or less modified versions of single and double lap shear tests. And finally, we have the pull up test that is based on ASTM 7522. Uh, now, given the limitations I've explained earlier, where each of the test methods can mimic one of the possible scenarios, but not all the times, and also the technical challenges in maintaining the, the uh, ensuring the uh, integrity of the bond system is also there. Um, and we have dispersion of uh, test results that must be commonly available in the literature. And lack of standardized test methods are also one of the challenges that uh, hamper or let's say limit the extent of capturing all the possible uh, FRP concrete bond behavior in such a way that most of the laboratories use ad hoc systems in order to test the behavior for their own uh, approach. For example, simple double lap shear is one of the most commonest systems that, are, uh, uh, that is used for that purpose. So finally, we also can claim that there is no compatibility between the various test methods. One can say that a system based on certain ad hoc uh, basis may behave differently when you compare it with another uh, system. For that, we aim to develop a robust testing uh, app um, apparatus that can be convertible from one test method to the other, 
and from one testing system to the other in such a way that it can conduct the test of both externally bounded, near surface mounted, uh, etc. Um, the solution is in two phases. For example, we have the first phase that is patented device shown here that is meant to be convertible to conduct all those test methods I highlighted earlier. Um, when it comes to the double lab shear, the gadgets in the apparatus request that uh, one uses the U-shaped FRP, which is limited as, as, as I've mentioned. For example, you cannot use the protruded system to do such kind of testing. Mostly fiber rupture uh, is very common. And uh, for that, we see it as a limitation to a layoff system. So, uh, considering the fact that we have other strengthening systems, not just externally bonded uh, weight layoff system, we have the protruded, we have FRCM, near surface mounted rows, check memory alloys, and so on and so forth, we extended the design of that uh, apparatus to a phase two, in which all those identified systems can uh, also be tested. So the gadgets, the gadgets are many, but most importantly, they are adjustable in such a way that it can be uh, converted from one test setup to, to another. And we have some parts here, which is very important, that can be utilized for testing the near surface mounted uh, system. So uh, that is a patent that is uh, under uh, examination. But this is a typical coupled form of the apparatus, where this adjustable hanger is the secret behind the success of the apparatus, such that it can be converted from one system to another. Now, uh, the application of the apparatus is divided into two main categories. The first one is for plate-like externally bonded systems, including the uh, uh, weight layup, protruded, FRCM, chemical alloy plates, and so on. And the apparatus here that we call universal bond tester is shown in the middle that can be converted to different uh, uh, possible test scenarios. I will talk about that in more details. The second application aspect concerns the uh, near surface mounted composites, given that there are different test setups also in, in the literature for near surface mounted, including single, double, or beam based uh, testing. So we have the apparatus here with that bottom part that I have mentioned in the previous two slides that can be adjusted to conduct all those possible test approaches for the near surface mounted uh, uh, system. For example, in the beam based system, we have this uh, adjustable part such that it can break the protruding uh, FRP uh, that's from the concrete block. Then experimental investigation in order to prove the concept, we have the material properties as shown, uh, consisting of concrete and then the FRP and FOG system that was used in the wet layoff system and preparation of different uh, concrete specimens each one with its own different dimensions, and we made sure that we captured all those different possible test standards, starting from the single lab shear, beam test, double lab shear, full up test, mixed mode, and so on. Uh, specimen preparation, of course, the usual saturation in the wet layoff system, followed by uh, curing it and then making it ready for testing the bone. But in case of the full up test, we have an extra step that requires coring of the uh, uh, of the of, of, of the bonded FRP that will make it possible to mount those dollies. And the dollies we are seeing here are actually part of the apparatus gadget that will be convertible from one system to, to another. So here are typical specimens prepared that can be utilized for different purposes, including the double lab, the use of the U-shape of FRP that may or may not work, and it's substitute version where instead of U-shape, we now try to make use of two disconnected FRP strips such that it may avoid that kind of failure mode and so on and so forth. This is the test matrix showing the test methods uh, or approaches utilized. And here we have the test standard starting from the beam-based single lab, double lab, mixed mode, and full of test. The first group consists of the traditional beam test in the ACM standard or its modified version and the application of the apparatus in order to make it possible for conducting such type of test. The second category is the single lab shear where the apparatus needs to be 
uh, reconfigured in order to conduct the test without changing a new system. And then we have the double lock here, consisting of the traditional approach of two blocks. And uh, the second here shows the use of the U-shaped uh, FRP that may or may not work in some cases. And the third one, the use of two disconnected FRP strips in order to avoid the unwanted fiber rupture. Then the mixed mode test, where we have the adjustable hanger that can vary the angle of the U-shaped FRP. And the second version also use disconnected FRP strips in such a way that in case this doesn't work, then the apparatus can still be used for, for protruded systems. And finally, the apparatus, uh, compatibility to the, uh, pull of testing, where we have two categories here. We call it PO top and PO bottom. The top size means that we mounted the FRP on the top part of the block after casting, with reference to the casting direction. And the bottom part is also, uh, tested in such a way that we would probably see some difference or, or not. Instrumentation was based on LVDTs and strain gauges, no use of DIC, but uh, we can see the realization of economical use of material in the double lab share, for example, use of only one block. And of course, uh, the gadgets for data acquisition are also reduced by half. In the beam test, we also have the instrumentation shown here with a series of uh, strain gauges uh, in both the traditional up to the use of the apparatus for the same purpose. We were able to realize uh, uh, interesting failure modes in both the three versions of the beam-based uh, testing method where a thin strip of the concrete uh, substrate gets uh, attached to the FRP uh, layer and uh, that happens in all the three cases. There is a short video here showing the failure uh, uh, phenomenon of both the three tests, in both the uh, traditional, the modified traditional, and the use of the uh, apparatus for the same testing system. Then the failure mode of the double lock shear test utilized here in the traditional approach, and uh, followed by the use of the apparatus with the U-shaped FRP, most of the specimens in this second category failed in terms of uh, FRP rupture, which wasn't successful, which will make it necessary for probable repeatability or a repeated uh, testing before one can get a satisfactory behavior. Whereas in the case of reconfiguring the apparatus to make it possible to test two disconnected FRP strips, a satisfactory debonding happened similar to that of the traditional setup. So for example, there is a video here showing the debonding of the traditional uh, double lock shear, where we can see that in most cases one has to have four expectations about the locations of the debonding, which may make it necessary for one to go and uh, instrument all the four laps uh, with strain gauges, whereas in this case, we don't have to do that. We have only half of it, and uh, the debonding happens in a satisfactory manner. Then the failure mode for the mixed mode. Given that we have a weakening angle here, we were lucky that is an advantage for us because the U-shaped version of the apparatus allowed successful debonding without rupturing of the fibers. And uh, the use of the disconnected uh, version also has the same behavior. So we have both the two failure, uh, uh, failed specimens shown on the right here. Um, the apparatus is safe. Because after the bonding, we have the uh, swinging part that will prevent possible uh, flying debris uh, that could harm the user. Finally, the STM 7522 that shows uh, the failed specimens here for both the top and the bottom part of the instrumented systems, which all of them resulted in satisfactory uh, bond failure. And uh, these are just some cleaned up dollies after the uh, test has been conducted. Then we realized uh, trilinear bond slip behavior in the uh, shared dominant tests. For example, the first graph here shows the behavior of the single lab shear, where we will notice the third branch here having some negative uh, stresses, and this is one of the artifacts of the test method using single lab shear, 
if the clamping system is not so much secured, the unnecessary bending of the FRP could result, that will result in negative uh, strain and hence stresses. This is shown here on this figure, where we can see the uh, kind of uh, tilting of the clamping system that may have resulted in these negative stresses. When one uses the apparatus with the double lap shear, that negative stresses are absent. Of course, we can uh, uh, claim that the third branch is almost associated with the friction behavior after the bonding has happened. And the figure here shows the uh, uh, symmetric loading that is maintained by the use of the double lap shear. Uh, for the mixed mode, of course, we expect it to have negative stresses at the, towards the end because we are bending the, 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 the strips. And uh, it is more realistic because it shows the, the scenario whereby we have diagonal shear cracking that can uh, create uh, crack-induced debonding. And it can also be used as a means of diagnosing what may go wrong in the single lap shear test. For example, due to the adjustability of the hanger in the test apparatus, one can do a parametric study to see the angle at which the bond strip behavior of the mix mode can replicate what is obtained in the single lap shear test in order to probably know what may have been uh, wrong in there. Uh, in the case of the beam-based test, because as I said before, it's accompanied by a compression in, in addition to the shear behavior, we notice an exaggerated, I mean, values of the stresses, which is a bit unrealistic compared with those obtained in the uh, shear dominant test. And this is not surprising given that the beam test type is not meant for bond slip analysis. Therefore, the best thing one can do is to use the STM equation in that standard in order to get the average shear stress uh, that causes that causes the uh, the failure. This is a summary of the obtained bone capacities for the different setups compared with the single lap shear, for example. We see that the double lap shear has uh, about 15% more capacity compared with the single lap shear and due to the un unwanted bending of the FRP strip. Uh, the beam uh, based test has its own version of the shear capacity, which agrees more or less closely with the uh, uh, single and double lap shear. But in all these cases, we can see that the, the capacity is higher than that of the single lap shear due to the uh, uncontrollable behavior of the bending of the FRP. But interestingly, for the flow of test, which we cannot compare with the shear based test, we were able to see consistent results between both the top and the bottom cast uh, specimen. This is because this is a controlled testing. It doesn't reflect the, uh, homo, sorry, the heterogeneity that may have been there when we uh, consider field uh, testing. Uh, there are other miscellaneous tests that the apparatus was used to uh, conduct. We are not presenting them here. For example, we can adjust the hunger to have negative mixed mode uh, uh, behavior either using the U-shape or the disconnected strips. And uh, the bending test also can be conducted in a mixed mode manner such that the apparatus uh, can have uh, an inclination of the FRP strip and uh, it can be a substitute of a beam, uh, sorry, of the double lap uh, uh, mixed mode test that we saw in the previous uh, few slides. We can also use the adjustable hanger to our advantage to conduct tests on different types of specimens, um, uh, such that the, the, the top part can, can be moved to the desired location and side effect analysis can be conducted satisfactorily. Uh, the second extension of the work is uh, to apply the apparatus to FRCM systems, but because most of the test types are similar to those of the external bonded FRP, I wouldn't spend much time here other than just comment about the different failure modes for the different systems, which is more or less fiber slippage, or sometimes with associated uh, matrix uh, uh, cracking. But uh, the use of uh, the same approaches, again, for NSM systems, uh, where we tested different uh, geometries of the bars and uh, different uh, materials, as well as different bond test methods, here we have two versions for the single lap shear. The usual, uh, I mean, uh, the usual case where we have the bar within the middle 
and the case where we have the bar close to the edge such that we can test the edge effect similar to the uh, to the single lash shear. The double lash shear has two versions of all. We can test it in a symmetric way or an asymmetric way. And finally, the beam base test. And uh, we found again so many various um, ranging behaviors in, in, in terms of failure mode, starting from the uh, uh, fiber uh, adhesive interface, concrete splitting, etc. But again, that is just a, a brief overview about its compatibility. I would not comment so much about the results for now. And uh, I would like to conclude by mentioning that we developed this te test apparatus that is robust and convertible to conduct all the test methods. It has been used to our advantage for economical evaluation of and comparison of various test methods. And we found consistent results in full of tests. And we found uh, about 15% weakening in the capacity in the single lab shear. And uh, this is a fact. We don't have to repeat it uh, here, but we we'll just write it. Uh, which is the beam test is not suitable for bond slip analysis. Uh, the mixed mode test can be used to simulate the more realistic field scenario, but it can also be used as a diagnostic uh, tool to find out what may go wrong when we apply it, uh, when we uh, when we use single lab shear test for testing. We also successfully uh, extended the work to the near surface mounted systems as well as protruder system, etc. Uh, one benefit of this campaign is that. Um, uh, the data can be used for more detailed validation of uh, numerical tools, especially that uh, bond behavior using numerical modeling is mostly based on a certain type of selected test system or method. But given that a test system in one I mean, uh, approach may behave differently when you try to model the same problem with a different test method, then consistent validation could be helpful for us here. Uh, this is just an ongoing work where we uh, use the apparatus for testing the bond uh, uh, and studying the effect of activation temperature in externally bonded uh, shape mineral alloys as either as uh, near surface or externally bonded types. And in future, what we aim to accomplish is uh, automation because in its current state, uh, manual uh, labor is there. One has to really, I mean, uh, uh, work a lot in order to convert it from one system to the other. Again, we require the use of the universal testing machine in order to grip it. So for us to make it more automated, there is need to substitute the universal testing machine. That's why we designed an adaptable testing uh, loading frame. That is patent pending, but the good news is that just two days ago, we received a notice of allowance of this uh, loading frame. The aim is to convert uh, or to combine them together, meaning the loading frame and the and the apparatus, plus some collaboration with some uh, machine designers in order to get a more uh, 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 robust and uh, automated system of testing. So I would like to acknowledge uh, the Harant Techno Valley Company, the, in the innovation hub of my school, and then the leadership of the sites of my school, and the lab engineers that helped with the testing. I thank you for this. For questions for Dr. Mukhtar. Thank you so much for the presentation. I was just curious about the results that you showed, uh, in particular a couple of things. One was the fact that you saw at some point the shear stress becomes negative, so basically changes sense. Change in sign, but that's after the bonding, right? So what would be part of the of the this bond one. law? Sorry, what would be? So th this is like a bond law. So you're yes, you're uh, actually these are various instances during the the, the the bonding, right? In the beginning it's linear, and then second part declination, and towards the end the third branch is mostly associated with the friction, right? Because the, the, the two parts are no more attached together. So the negative strength is due to, as I said, possible bending of the FRP. And definitely we have strain gauges. When you bend a strain gauge, it gives you a, a negative strain region. But yeah. the shear stress, if it's negative, means it's the opposite sense. Uh, so first of all, 
even the case that has a positive shear stress, that is actually not, I mean, the case where the debonding has already happened. So the, the, the two parts are separated. But the friction effect is, according to the literature, what causes that behavior. Is that, yeah, I, I think from, from the mechanics point of view, there is something that is not this, you can connecting. call it, you can call it, um, a ghost, I mean, strength. It, it, it isn't a kind of real bone strength towards the last branch. The real bone strength is mostly bilinear. You have rising and declining part. The third branch is mostly, even the positive one, is not an attached head. Okay, well, maybe we'll talk. But we the, talk the second comment is, from what I was a student, I always heard that the single lap, it's a number, uh, an upper bound of the double lap. Because of a fact of statistics, there is always like a weakest link, and the more surfaces you have, the more you're going to find the weakest links. In your result, you're showing exactly the opposite. I've never seen it that before. So where, where is it coming from? What did you say is the reason why it's an upper bound? Right. Because of single lines? Because you have two surfaces. So of course the one that is weakest is going to be the one that fails. Okay, what if both the two are stronger than the one in the single lap here? Then in that case, the behavior could still be larger, right? Or higher strength than what you can find in the single lap here case. So it depends on the material integrity. It's not only, assuming we have perfection in producing the specimens, then we can claim what you say. But we have imperfection, and I have shown an example in this figure where we can see a tilting, right? And a tilting means you are now indirectly having a partial mixed mode, mixed mode behavior, which is an unwanted behavior. While in the double lap here, we see consistent symmetry maintained there. It's impossible. There is no symmetry in this world. No, yeah. we can say better than the single lap here. That's what I mean. Of course, not perfect symmetry. Saying on that, I, I don't need a mic. <laughs> you know, <laughs> saying on it, uh, and I appreciate that this was not a point of looking at the data, but it's curious to me that the mixed mode of strength seems to be very similar to the single and the double lap, and, and typically, it, the minute you add a little bit of mode one, Capacity just tanks. So Agreed. We, we can prove that with our duct tape. Where, where's our duct tape? Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is a good question. So, so and what, what's happening? I, I, yeah. what, what was your angle for one? And did you look at different mixed modes? Because this, and it may be just this one data point, and, and I'll ignore the negative shear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a very good point. I would like to mention something I did not mention here uh -huh. is that the, the, the specimens were produced in batches. So if we go back to the material properties. So, so it may not be comparable. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's a okay. good one. Yeah. And given that the mixed mode angle was very small, that could uh, approach the single lab for two different materials. Compare or did you come up with that ratio of what mixed based on your mixed mode? Um, yeah, this is an excellent question. In its current form, the apparatus cannot have consistent I cannot maintain the, 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 the angle to be constant. During the bonding, the angle keeps changing, therefore the contribution is difficult. Other questions? So I can ask one to follow up on Dr. Carloni's question. So the, the way you calculated load, was that in that mysterious negative uh, load or negative uh, bond stress, was that load calculated with a load cell or from a strain gauge from on strain gauge. the specimen? Yeah, from See, I think that's what was going on. As he said, the bending was causing that. Other questions? No, I think I just want to ask you that question. I think this uh, is represented by uh, strain versus slip. That's what we had in the previous study. Uh, because th this phenomena is not related to the shear uh, inverse, but basically to the bending effects on the strain gauge. So that you get negative values in the strain gauge and could be represented by that and uh, avoid this issue. Yeah, I mean, the field now is that strain Other questions? Uh, yeah. All right, let's thank Dr. Mukhtar one more time. Thank you all. <laughs>